Okay, so do you really know the order of operations? Well, if you do know the order of operations and you're an order of operations expert, you'll be able to dispatch with this problem pretty easily, okay? However, there's a lot of people out there, okay, that uh, think they know math better than they do, and uh, there's going to be a couple, I would say 90% of the people are going to do this problem one way or the other, okay? There's other ways to to do this problem, and uh, obviously there's only one correct way of doing it, but I'm going to focus in on what I would think would be the two most common ways people will approach this problem. Now, I'm going to let you determine which is right and which is wrong. Of course, then ultimately I would tell you which is right, but I'm going to focus in again on the most common misunderstandings when we're talking about the order of operations. But you need to totally understand the order of operations. It's absolutely essential in uh, whatever level of math that you're in. And it's probably, if I had to say what's the top three things that people make mistakes in in math, and that would include algebra and beyond, it would be, you know, order of operations would be those uh, right up there, okay? Along with uh, fractions, not really understanding fractions well enough, and positive and negative numbers. It's all these little simple type of uh, concepts that students think they just know better than they they actually do, okay? so. We're going to hopefully clear up any confusion on order of operations and kind of reinforce, uh, you know, the importance of the order of operations, which is uh, the most important. It's so urgent that you get this right. But if you stick with me for a few minutes, uh, we will get you squared away on the order of operations. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I uh, offer 100 plus different type of math courses. I have the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Going to be launching pre-calculus here soon. But I have many, many specialty courses, test preparation courses, like for the SAT, ACT, GED, GRE, ASVAB, teacher certification exams, Accuplacer, CLEP exams. So what I do in those cases, I do a lot of research what's on those particular type of exams, and I create custom math courses. So I've had custom math courses, custom math curriculums, very, very, very comprehensive um, uh, courses, okay, specialty courses. So if you have a particular need, maybe you're going into nursing or trying to test into something, I likely have the course that uh, you're looking for, okay, so you, for a particular exam. But if you're taking, let's say, Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra or some basic math and you're struggling, you can uh, use my program, my courses, just as different instruction, okay? I'm probably going to be teaching uh, different than your teacher. We're going to be teaching the same concepts, but if you like my teaching style, you can use my program in that manner. Okay, but uh, if you are a student, I must stress the importance of note-taking. It is the golden rule of math that I've developed over decades of teaching a subject, and it goes like this. Those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and those students who don't like taking math notes, they're like, no, I don't do that, okay? I'm not into taking math notes. I'm into... Uh, Facebook and Instagram and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Listen, I get it. Uh, thank goodness there wasn't cell phones around when I was going to school uh, and because I would have been totally, totally lost. <laughs> More already, I was already distracted with my buddies in class. But if I had a cell phone, forget it. You know, I'm not even sure I would have graduated high school. Listen, I get it. Okay, there's a lot of distractions, but your job is to remain focused. Now, evidence of remaining focused, paying attention to what the teacher's uh, saying is your notes, okay? That is evidence, okay? That activity is critical. It's not enough to look at your best friend's notes because, you know, they write neater than you and they're really into math, you know, uh, and you're not because, you know, you're like, no, I'll just look at your notes. No, that you're missing the point. You have to personally like use your hand to write on the paper all that activity of seeing listening writing is retention okay that's what goes into your brain right so watching math is not the same as uh, actually learning math and note taking is critical anyways i state that because you know if you're interested in doing better math if you don't know the importance of this you know then you're going to be 
you know, struggling continuously. Anyways, so improve your note taking if you need to, which is probably going to apply to most of you out there. But in the meantime, you do need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into the order of operations, everyone's favorite topic. So what are we talking about here? Well, we have operations and mathematics. So let's write this up here, order of operations. Okay, so what kind of operations are we talking about? Hopefully we're not talking about, oh, I need to have knee surgery and then sh shoulder surgery and then, you know, whatever else. No, no, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, so what are these operations? Well, these things here are mathematical operators. It's things that we could do with numbers. We can add numbers, subtract them, multiply, divide. We can find the powers of them. Sometimes we have numbers and numeric expressions inside all these little parentheses, a little squiggly brackets, you know, these type of brackets. So like, what do we do first? You know, do I do this and then or do that? Or maybe I do this and this and this, who knows, right? We, but listen, there is a particular way that we have to follow. There is a specific order to, uh, you know, that we need to take uh, while we're dealing with problems that have various uh, op mathematical operators in them, okay? But what is that order? Well, that order is this little saying right here, and most of you um, learn this as the phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And, um, you know, it's a cute little mnemonic, a little phrase that you remember, but it's PEMDAS, right? It stands for something. And uh, this is how we kind of know what the order of operations is, right? So we have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, there it is, right? So I laid it out. But this is our kind of roadmap that tells us, you know, how to, you know, deal with these problems that involve multiple different type of mathematical uh, operators. Okay, now this seems pretty straightforward. Uh, hopefully for most of you, like, oh, okay, well, you know, I have a specific little checklist here. But why do so many students struggle with this? I get so many of these. What do you mean I got it wrong? Or, you know, I get it like this. I can't believe I didn't pass my order of operations quiz. Listen, because you got to really, really pay attention, right? Somewhere along the lines, if you were taking excellent notes, right, your teacher told you this stuff, right? And you would have been like, oh, okay, now. So, listen, this is right now a time for you to um, avoid making a very, very common um error when it comes to order of operations, all right? And we're going to clear that up in one second. But let me just emphasize here, this this problem is very easy. You need to do more additional practice, all right? You got to do a lot more practice with the order of operations because you can get more and more complicated. But let's get you to understand the basics here first. Okay, so we have this PEMDAS uh, situation. Here, I'll write this up right here, PEMDAS, okay. All right, so we got the problem here. Then we got the problem here, and there's this is two ways of doing the problem, all right? So let's just take a look at the most common uh, approaches, the most common results of um, doing this particular problem. Now, hopefully you did the problem yourself, or you're going to look at this work, and you're going to um, uh, identify with one of these results, most of you out there. Now, some of you, if you've got a different result, then you know you got a lot, <laughs> a lot more work to work on, but... In this particular problem, most people would come up with the result 21 or 65, right? I don't know if it's going to be 50-50, uh, you know, half the people here, half the people here, but a lot of people don't understand this. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So inside the parentheses, some, some of you might go like, okay, uh, I have 3 times 5 plus 20 divided by 2 times 5. This part of the problem is going to confuse most people. So someone can be like, all right, uh... 5 plus 20 divided by 2 times 5. So I'm going to go 2 times 5 first, all right? That gives me 10. So that's going to be 3 times 5 plus 20 divided by 10. All right, so 20 now divided by 10 is 2. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. So I have 5 plus 2, that is 7. And so I have 3 times 7 is 21, all right? So that's one approach. Seems logical, okay? But now let's go ahead and look at another approach. So we have here... We have 3 times 5 plus 20 divided by 2 times 5. So someone might go, all right, 20 divided by 2. All right, that's going to be 10. So I have 10 times 5. I have 3 times 5 plus 10 times 5. 10 times 5 here is 50. 
Okay, so I have five here. So five plus 50 is 55. So three times 55 is 165. Most people are going to give me this result or this result having, you know, studied or having a basic knowledge of the order of operations. Okay, so which one is right and which one is wrong? Okay, so any guesses out there? All right, you're like, uh. <laughs> all right, so drum roll, right? Which one is going to be right and which one is going to be wrong? Well, it turns out that this guy right here is correct. Okay, so if you got this answer and you know why you did it and it's not luck, give yourself a big smiley face, an A+, plus, a 1,000%. And matter of fact, if I was your teacher, I'd be like, that's an A+, plus, by the way. I'd be like, just take the rest of the year off. You're awesome. Go watch uh, this guy's YouTube videos and you'll be good to go in math. Well, not quite, right? But listen, that's very good. But why is this right and this is wrong? Well, let's go look at this problem here real quick. So what do we do? I'm assuming most of you know that the order of operations is P means uh, parentheses, okay? Do what's inside the parentheses first. That's basically what it means. Uh, I can explain more on this. Uh, it means grouping symbols. Do what's inside the grouping symbols, and you work from the innermost out, okay? So this is an easy problem. Of course, we can really, really get into it, and you need to really, really get into it. So you got to practice more complicated problems. But the P here is... Go do the work inside of parentheses, the innermost parentheses, but we only have one set of parentheses here, so, okay, we're working inside the parentheses. The E means powers or exponents. We don't have any powers, so that would be like 2 to the third power, which, of course, is 2 times 2 times 2, and that's equal to 8. We don't have any of those situations, so we move on. So now, here is where the crux of so much misunderstanding happens. Uh, some people are going to be like, okay, I got to do multiplication. I got to do multiplication X, right? So I'm doing multiplication because this is multiplication. Now remember, this is multiplication right here too. This is three times whatever, but we don't do that multiplication until we're finished with the parentheses stuff. So we got to do everything inside the parentheses. So a lot of you are going to be like, hey, you know, you're probably like maybe angry. You're like, mm, you know, like, uh, wait a minute. This says do multiplication. You're wrong, Mr. YouTube guy. Listen. I get it, okay? I've made this mistake thousands of times, so let's just kind of walk through this here. Like multiplication, I did multiplication, and then I did division next, okay? I get that, but that's not what this little PEMDAS means, okay? If you were taking great math notes, you would know uh, the situation. So it goes like this, okay? It's parentheses, powers, okay? But the M and D and the A and S really are not in this order, okay? This can be M or D, M or D or D or M. So it's multiplication or division and or division. Whatever comes first from left to right or left to right. And this is such a common misunderstanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we got to look here. Okay, what's coming first here? Is it division or multiplication? No, division is coming first, then multiplication. That's why we got to do the division first. Okay, we've got to do the division first, and then we do the multiplication. Whatever comes first from left to right, and that's the same thing. It works the same way with addition and subtraction. Now, once you understand that point, you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now i got to finish up with multiplication. That's 50. Finish up what's inside the parentheses. Okay, so that's 5 plus 50, which is 55. Then I do multiplication. I start working outside the parentheses. And so, you know, PEMDAS... You know, this uh, checklist is, you know, um, occurring throughout the problem. Um, you know, it's like you got to look at what's going on innermost, and then you got to, like, keep expanding from uh, parentheses inside and out. And again, this is a pretty basic problem, okay, when you're learning the order of operations. But let's get you to really understand the order of operations. And once you do get this down and you don't have any confusion about how to uh, apply PEMDAS, you're going to be good to go, and you're going to be like... All right, I get it. And you're going to be like, Mr. Like, I love math. Uh, math is so cool because I only get A pluses and 105, 1,005%. Uh, okay. I just, you know, teachers love to give those type of grades. No one wants to get an F, right? That's like, mm. so listen, if you've been, you know, you've had a tough time on a quiz or a test, don't get upset. You got to do something about it. You got to pay attention and, you know, obviously you got to write this stuff down. If you, there's too much coming your way in math, okay, 
it should be like, okay, I'll remember that because I have a photographic memory. I've heard that 10,000 times as well. Now, listen, maybe there's like 0.0001% of the population that truly are like prodigies. You can just look at everything. There's just too much information, too much detail, nuance information when you're studying mathematics. You got to write things down. You got to constantly review and practice. It's not enough to just watch someone do math. You yourself have to practice this stuff. And when you do, you'll get better at math and your, your grades will reflect that. Okay. And math is important, right? It means a lot to a lot of you out there, you know, whether you're going to, uh, you know, pass a certain exams or get into particular, you know, colleges you're looking for, or just passing a class. Okay. All right. So with that being said, uh, you know, if you learned something and you're like, okay, I like this video, help me out, please consider smashing that like button. That would help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. It's a great platform for uh, someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching math. My goal is to teach math in a clear and understandable uh, manner and get you excited about the subject. All right. I want you to continue to learn it and go as far as you uh, want to go. All right. Just don't don't let yourself uh, don't talk yourself out of taking more math. OK, the more math, you know, I think the better off you're going to be. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.